Good morning and welcome to City Talk. It's a weekly radio program, it's a podcast, it's a television program that we produce here at the City of Waco to educate and inform you about things that are going on in the city and that are important to us as, and for you as a citizen. John, I'm Larry Holsey, Director of Municipal Information and Communication for the City. Uh, and I get to host this program. And today I'd like, uh, like to welcome Mary Beth Kalk, who is the uh, uh, Development Director of Caritas, one of our many important uh, nonprofits that, uh, especially this time of the year, uh, there's needs out there in the community. Mary Beth, thank you so much for coming and being on the program today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, uh, I like to have typically you, and I used to have Buddy Edwards when he was a direct, executive director, but he, a good guy, got to retire finally uh, after a lot of service to y'all's organization and to the community in other ways, too. But uh, Food for Families was just this last week, a very important part of the community. I know a lot of people responded. and uh, But I know... You in Caritas, and as compared to a lot of people, uh, COVID has night COVID nineteen has impacted a lot of people. How has it impacted y'all's operation? Yes, I mean we've been seeing over ten thousand individuals average a month. Um, we've been continually open since March, since the pandemic hit. Um, we have not shut our doors, and so we're considered an essential service, and so we want to be there to provide those that food for those families that mm -hmm. would otherwise go hungry, especially during such this unprecedented time right now. Uh, we have many families that are coming to our, our pantry for the first time. So before the pandemic hit, we were serving about 7,500 on average individuals a month, mm -hmm. and now we're averaging between 10 to 10,500 individuals. Sizable increase, and it's very important because there are a lot of people without jobs uh, and people who are just uh, struggling in life right now, and it's, uh, it makes it difficult for everybody, and we all think it's difficult for us having to wear masks and things like that, but it's just really difficult when people especially have hit mm -hmm. uh, some uh, medical issues and have some expenses and things that they've incurred and whatever, yeah. Yes, and so we've been seeing that. We've had our case managers have been working so hard and they are tasked with such an emotional task right now to not only be managing their clients that they're working with before but we had so many calling and thankfully we, we got some funding mm -hmm. um, from United Way and from the Waco Foundation to get, help boost what we we're able to do in emergency services for families right now. So the food pantry is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 11 and then from 1 to 2 depending on weather and holidays, um, but we are serving on average 150 cars a day. It's set up through a drive through service so that we can social distance our staff, our volunteers coming in, we can protect our clients as well. And so we have volunteers and staff loading all the grocery baskets um, and then rolling those out to the cars and loading them into the trucks and the vehicles. And so um, beyond that with just food, we have so many families calling needing rental assistance. Um, utility assistance and so many families just affected for the first time because of this due to um, job loss, furloughs, cutbacks, things like that and so many businesses are just suffering mm -hmm. right now we're feeling that effect in the community. Yeah. Well you mentioned uh, all the various services you mentioned the rental assistance a few things like that we'll talk about that maybe a little later on mm -hmm. but you know I can only imagine how difficult it is to do the touchless and and the serving of the uh, because it used to, your, your clients would come in and, and kind of grocery shop with a cart and do their own picking and things like that. Now it's, it's hands off and you have to do it uh, the COVID way now. Yes, and we have masks, we have sanitation stations set up. Um, we have definitely have those protocols set up to protect our staff and our clients. But mm -hmm. we have staff that are just working so hard, just so incredibly hard right now, just from the date, the moment that they get there to the moment our doors close, everyone is working around the clock just to make sure these families get the food and mm -hmm. the rental assistance that they need, prescription assistance, utility assistance, because, you know, it has just been so much desperation mm -hmm. with some yeah. of these families and our case managers are saints. <laughs> yeah. They are working so hard and they are taking these emotional phone calls and, um, you know, I've had to uh, take what we call profiles of hope. So Profiles of Hope are our client stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I do is I try to show our donors and people that are giving towards Caritas to show them exactly what they're giving towards, to paint a picture of who they're trying to help. And so one of the uh, women that I had talked to, she was a single mom, and she has three daughters, and she has a disabled mother, 
She was the sole provider of the household. She was a manager for a local restaurant here, had a great job. It was a franchise restaurant, very stable. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, that chain just got hit so hard with COVID and they had to shut their doors completely. Wow. Yeah. So she lost her income and it just, everybody knows this unemployment was a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many people applying for unemployment at one time. And so she just was in desperation and her sister said, have you tried Caritas? And she said, no, I haven't. And so she called us and we were able to help her that day. We were able to pay her utility bills and her rental rent mortgage for the month. Um, and so, and then I said, have you used our grocery service? And she said, not yet. And I said, well, come on by. Mm -hmm. Our doors are open for you. We are here. And she was just in tears on the phone, yeah. just in tears. And so you could just feel that emotional turmoil that was there. And she's just one of thousands of our clients. Yeah. I can see the passion in your eyes. For those on radio, uh, you're missing it because you can tell this is a lady who has a passion. And I'm going to start tearing up, too, because <laughs> this is what's important about And that's why I wanted to share this program with you all out there and the listeners. This is the time of the year that we think of our families, but we also need to realize the importance of sharing what we've been blessed to have in either resources, money, job, things like that, and share it for the people just like you described, Mary Beth, uh, that, you know, it wasn't in their intent to lose their job or lose their income. They want to work. They want to do that. Yeah. But life is just kind of hicking them around by the way of COVID as it is mm -hmm. in this instance, and we need to share and, and be a part of that. And Caritas is just certainly one of those, those agencies. Now, you've, you've shared with us a good example. Now, thank you for doing that because that's, that's critical to let people really know the day-to-day -day working. And I can only imagine how you and your staff have to deal with it all the time, but that call, it's a calling. You have to have that passionate love in your heart to be able to do that day in and day out. And a lot of your volunteers kind of the same way. Uh, and I'm sure you're using as many volunteers as you possibly can because you're all stretched so much. Let's go back real quick because you keep talking about some of our clients. Uh, you have to have those people, not only just as people walking through the door, but they become something that you do through your case management. Talk a little about the case management and how overall you kind of help coach and counsel and not just do like you just did is say, okay, uh, have you taken care of advantage of our food pantry? Mm -hmm. No, you know, talk about case management part of what you do. So what we want to do is take a holistic approach to our clients. Um, we have case managers on staff that are there to support the clients and to really look at the root cause of why are they in the situation that they're in, why they're not able to budget um, for food for their families for month to month. Um, and right now COVID is a completely different animal on its own it and we're working with these families. Um, but prior to COVID, we were working with individuals who um, just hadn't been taught those skills yet. And so it can be life changing. Um, we also have a case manager that is helping with employment. So if we have clients who are interested in furthering their education, we can help that through partnerships that we have within the community. If they want to get a certification in anything, um, we can certainly help them with that. We have a health nutritionist come in and she teaches on healthy eating and she actually works with the clients right now and we have her doing social media posts as well with the produce, um, any of the ingredients and the food that they've received that week. What are some recipes that they could cook with, mm -hmm. with those products? Um, and so it really is a holistic approach of saying, okay, well, this person is in this situation. How did they get into this situation? How can we uplift them with skills and training and education to help them further themselves in life and be independent? Oh, that's amazing. Well, and it's so much. And I know you all do in your counseling efforts and things like that, you do some of the education things. If nothing else, you can always refer them to some other agency that you know uh, is more specialized or maybe has a bigger uh, repertoire more or less or bigger uh, ability to give training maybe on financial uh, design and things like that but you know they, they want to take and help people that really need the help and that's right now we just finished having veterans day and i know you all have some special things you do for veterans talk about that yes we have a grant from the texas veterans commission and it is specialized towards veterans that are either honorably retired discharged, anything like that, um, that live 200% or below the federal poverty line and for their surviving spouses, which is a really important piece. Mm -hmm. Not only is it for the veterans, but if they have passed 
and their spouse is still in that situation and living 200 percent below the federal poverty line, they can qualify for these benefits as well. And so we have this in several counties, not just McLennan County. Um, we have the listing on our website at caritas-waco.org. Um, but we have two case managers that are focused on veterans. Both of them are veterans themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're so excited to have them. And so they go out and actually are just recruiting veterans to say, hey, we have this support for you guys. Um, we want to help you. First, they've served our country and they've, you know, donated so much time in their life and for their families um, to serve our country. And we want to give back to them as well. And so that involves the same thing as our regular clients um, for prescription assistance, child care assistance. It could be rent, mortgage assistance, anything like that to get them into um, seeking more other employment. If they're a veteran looking for a job, we can help them with that. We want to be there for them. Absolutely. You mentioned the counties. What is y'all's outreach as far as do you have a specific area? Is it McLennan County or is it greater than that? Or what, what, how many people, what are the counties or whatever can you serve? We are, for the Veterans Case Management. For any of it, for any project, of it. yeah. Um, well, for right now, the majority of our clients are McLennan County. The mm -hmm. majority of them are in Waco. But we have no geographical barriers. So if anyone comes from Austin or San Antonio and they're in our community for whatever need that they have, we will provide food to them. That's fantastic. Now, we just finished having Food for Families, which is a major food drive in the greater Waco area. The KWTX News 10 helps sponsor and is a major uh, resource for that. Uh, and that refreshes and refills a lot of your emptier shelves. But that's just a once-a-year project. Uh, so you know, that may stock up your shelves pretty much there, but that doesn't keep it going through the whole year. So you, the holidays are really important, certainly to remember that. And by the way, if you've missed food for families and didn't get to contribute and still want to, you will still always take contributions. How can people bring food, for example? We'll talk about money maybe a little bit later on. How can people bring food? Just bring it by to drop it off or what? Um, we're located at 300 South 15th Street. We will always take food. Mm -hmm. we, will always, we will also do, we have trucks that will do large pickups as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's at 15th and Mary. That's mm -hmm. where our warehouse is. But they can call our phone number, 254-753-4593, uh, to schedule a larger pickup. Okay. And you want all non-perishable foods. You don't want any frozen or meat or anything like that. Anything that, that typically would need to be on a shelf for a number of weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to possibly. be unexpired. Mm -hmm. um, or not near expiration food, <laughs> sure. um, but we really need canned meat, tuna, canned chicken, um, pop top, because we do serve a homeless population as well. Mm -hmm. I believe last month we served around uh, 400 homeless really? in Waco, as well as clients. It's not even just people coming mm -hmm. um, through the drive through that have housing. We also have this population that we're providing food to that does not have housing at all. Yeah. Um, and so the pop top is great for homeless because they don't need a fork or anything like mm -hmm. that. They don't need a can opener <laughs> yeah, to exactly. eat it. Yeah. Um, but we're also taking like individualized crackers, um, cereal, pasta, dry goods, pasta sauce. Think of hearty soups, stews, chicken noodle soup, mm -hmm. um, green beans, vegetables, anything like that that's canned, canned fruit. Um, but we're also taking those, that, those grains as well. Mm -hmm. That's another big piece for us too. Well, I think it'd be a great opportunity if any of you are listeners and viewers are out there who have not participated in Food for Families, why don't you do this? Why don't you go to the grocery store this week and do nothing but shop for groceries that you would be able to give to Caritas or somebody else and then take it by. That would be a great way to, to uplift, I think, your personal spirits uh, for the holidays, uh, especially the week here of coming up on Thanksgiving. Uh, you're sharing part of your resources and clearing not necessarily your shelves, but buying stuff specifically for people who need it. And Caritas is a great uh, organization that can help spread that. So what are holiday needs do you need? I know holiday giving is really good, and I'm, that's what I wanted to encourage uh, the food, first of all. Uh, and But, you know, holiday is important, so let's talk about the holiday. And then we're going to talk about how to sustain this throughout the rest of the year because you can't just focus on, oh, yeah, it's the Thanksgiving or Christmas holidays. We're going to give now, and then we don't think about you until again next year. Right. What about holidays? What's specific to holidays uh, are you needing in addition to the food? Well, we do a big end of the year holiday push for fundraising. Um, we want to make sure that we have that money going into the first of the year, that we're able to buy those groceries that helps with our, our first quarter budget um, to provide food for families. Um, but really with that, it's just saying, 
you know, if you want to break, make, do a monetary donation or do a check or money order, make it out to Caritas, put um, holiday giving in the memo, mail that to us at 300 South 15th Street. Um, and then what that does is that helps us stock our shelves from the beginning of the year. <laughs> And we're really excited for that. And so around the holidays, we have a lot of um, very dedicated donors that give to us every year. It's just part of their budget for the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's almost become a fundraising event in itself is mm -hmm. our holiday giving. And so this time of year, we just ask people if they are able to give and they can open their hearts to give the most generous gift that they can give um, this holiday season. We would greatly appreciate that. We have a lot of donors that also make gifts in honor of others. So one of the ones I'm working on right now, we have a very sweet Grammy and Grampy mm -hmm. <laughs> who like to give, uh, make a donation in honor of their 18 grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> and so go. we do cards for them and we put this together and we say, dear so-and-so, Grammy and Grampy made a gift in honor of Caritas for the holiday, for Christmas for you. Um, and then we put that together and that's part of their gift for their grandchildren. And I just think that's incredibly thoughtful. I think that that's such a meaningful way to still give someone a gift for the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also giving a gift to someone else for helping to feed a family as well. Absolutely. If you've just joined us, we're visiting with Mary Beth Kalk, who is the uh, Director of Development for Caritas in Waco, one of our major food pantries and, and uh, nonprofits that help support those who don't have. And uh, you all very carefully screen and make sure things go through like that. One of the things I think I learned from Buddy Edwards when he was here on this program last year or before he retired anyway, you all take a lot of the money that you have and you have the opportunity to buy uh, from various food pantries or better than wholesale type of situations. So we're not just only depending upon the gifts of food, but you're able to buy food. Talk a little bit about that and how somebody's dollar can be go can go a whole lot more than just buying a dollar's worth like you would go to the grocery store currently. Oh yeah, whenever you give a monetary gift to us, we're able to buy five times what you would be able to buy with that dollar at the grocery store through our partnership with the Central Texas Food Bank located in Austin. We have several other um, community partners for grocery purchasing and that's a big piece of our budget is where this goes to because we buy the produce. We buy a lot. We want to make sure that all of our clients um, have a really healthy balance of the food that's giving to them. I think when a lot of people think of food pantries, they think of just canned goods. But our pantry is so much more than just canned goods. It really, truly is. When I started this job, I, I knew a lot about the pantry, but going in and seeing it and seeing these Gaylords of fresh produce coming in and seeing the milk and the eggs and the, the, the nutrition mm -hmm. thought that's put into this, so we make sure that they have meat. We want to make sure that they have fresh vegetables, milk, eggs if we have it. Um, and then we'll also do like our grains, our carbs, things like that, the pasta, things like that. Um, and then some canned goods, but we do try to limit it. A lot of the canned goods are used for the homeless population, but we do also, we have volunteers that come in and bag those canned goods to go along with the other fresh food that we're giving mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Now, one of the other things that you operate, again, to kind of help generate and stimulate finances and things, you have a thrift store. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, uh, it's called gold, hold, uh, is it Golden? Hidden. Hidden, Hidden Treasures. treasures. <laughs> Hidden Treasures Thrift. Talk about that because, again, another opportunity. I do the same thing. Uh, many times I will bring over to you all my gently worn, as it may be, clothes that for whatever reason my family says, ah, don't wear that anymore. And I'm like, okay, but it's still good. So I, I take it over to you all and talk about that because that's a great opportunity for you all to receive good quality uh, clothing mm -hmm. and you all resell that. And it's a great place to go shopping. I've been over there and I bought some nice stuff over there. It, thank you. Thank you for going. <laughs> I with. have. I've donated, but I've also bought too. So. so a lot of people don't know this, but we have two locations. We have one on Bosky Boulevard and then we have one on Bellamy Drive as okay. well. And so the managers there are great. The Bosque one is our larger one with the warehouse. That's in the Fairgate Shopping Center. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's right next to Harbor Freight. Mm -hmm. um, but you can bring items over there, schedule it, call them, because they do have certain donation times. Um, but we're always looking for, like, electronics, cl gently used clothing, anything like that, household items. Um, but everything that's purchased through the store supports our programs. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge piece that helps. So that case management... Mm -hmm. That's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. This is how we're able to help, how, how we're able to have case managers come in. 
Um, and so that, that really helps some of our overhead costs as well, um, purchasing through these thrift stores. And so our staff over there is great at both locations. The, they go through everything and they make sure that it's very high quality goods. Um, and then we have new products too. So you can go in there and you see a lot of humidifiers and vapor mm -hmm. machines and fans and mm -hmm. all sorts of different items as well. And so when it pre COVID, we had a area um, at our 300 South 15th Street location where we would allow clients to come in and get clothing if they need it, mm -hmm. um, blankets and things like that. But right now we have some items back there, but with the drive through it's not as much of a need unless someone asks for it um, since this, that part's not open right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we do ask that people go and donate those items to the Bosky or Bellmead location. And then if we have a family that needs something, like if we have a family that calls and says, I need my house burned down, I need X, Y, Z, we will pull from the thrift stores. How super, how super, how neat. Well, I challenge our viewers and listeners to go shopping over there. All our is, Christmas is out. What's that? All the Christmas items are out. Absolutely. I'm, I, it's amazing what you go in there. It's, it's a full-blown retail mm -hmm. store and some very good products at a ridiculously low price. Yes. And that money all goes to the support and operation of the things that we've been talking about. Great, great things going on. And I know you have a golf tournament as well. Talk about that while we're talking about kind of fundraising as it may be. So we have an annual golf tournament. So the past year, our golf tournament was usually in October. We had that. We didn't get to do that this year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So right now, our hope is to maybe do it in the spring. We see a lot of other, other nonprofits right now that are having successful outdoor golf tournaments because you can social distance, um, you can wear your mask, you can still have do it, you can be a, one person in a cart. And so we're hoping to still do that. That's gonna give us a glimmer of hope for that for this year. Um, so we just want our community members to keep an eye out for that. Um, and so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to announce something soon. Absolutely. Great stuff. And you had a feast for, is it feast for caring? Or? Feast of caring. Caring. Talk about that. So unfortunately that was canceled for this year too. Mm -hmm. But we did in lieu of that was an online auction. And so we had a lot of bidders signed up. We had almost 200 uh, people sign up to bid on items. And so that brought in some support. We also had our sponsorships from Feast of Caring that was canceled in April of last year because of the pandemic. And, you know, big thank you to Dupuy Oxygen, HEB, Grande, TXU for their support. Those are some of our larger sponsors. And mm -hmm. we have several others within the community that are sponsors and restaurant partners as well. But we're hoping to host an in-person, we'll see, we don't know, mm -hmm. um, October 2021. Okay. And so the tentative date is October 19th, but we're still playing it by ear. Yeah. You know, we're just going to say our prayers mm -hmm. and... You know, I know the rest of the community is trying to figure out what to do with in-person events yeah. and definitely what change that's the way to like. do things. Now, let's talk a little bit about volunteers because I know an organization like you cannot operate really effectively without volunteers. Uh, what type of volunteer positions do you have, uh, and what type of commitment or whatever else? And you know, is you have to commit to certain things. And and I know with the COVID, that changes everybody's thinking of how I go masking and can I, and of course, especially of those people like myself, even who are of an age that you have to be careful about getting involved in that type of thing too, you know, so. So we definitely, volunteers are some, uh, one of our backbones to operating. And so we were really spread thin during the beginning of COVID. Um, it was definitely something that um, with our volunteers that we had to limit. We weren't able to have as many come in because um, we had to keep social distancing. We didn't know where the spread was going to be, what it was going to look like, and things like that. And so right now we have a volunteer coordinator. His name is Andrew. He is great. He's such an awesome person to work with. And so about, I would say, July, we started resuming our volunteers coming in. And this past month we had 90 volunteers. Most of them were coming in in groups. And we have a lot of churches volunteering, Girl Scouts, um, mother-daughter groups, things like that coming in. And um, we do ask, we do question and screen the volunteers. Have you been out of town? Have you been traveling? Anything like that. And so we really try to limit, you know, we want the volunteers to disclose and be honest about that um, because we need to protect our staff and our clients as well. Uh, but we do have them coming in. And then what we have them doing right now is helping load the carts in the pantry. So it is 
grueling work. Mm -hmm. It is, um, it will, your back will hurt <laughs> after you've done it for a day. It's a good exercise program. You can it pay to go to a gym program. or you can go to work at Caritas exactly. as a volunteer. Exactly. You can come lift 30 pound turkeys. <laughs> 30 <laughs> pound turkey. That's, ooh, that's a big Or turkey. Yeah. slabs of beef and things yeah. like that are canned goods. But right now we have all the volunteers coming in, um, either wrapping canned goods into bags, loading the carts, and then we have some volunteers helping load the vehicles as well right now. Mm -hmm. And so if someone's interested in volunteering, they can go to our website, caritas-waco.org, go to Get Involved, and then there's a volunteer tab underneath there, and then our volunteer application is right there, and it goes directly to Andrew. So there you have an opportunity to serve by volunteering. You can donate money. You can donate food. Uh, there's opportunities and it really won't cost anything but just your time and just a little bit of your energy, some of your resources possibly, but, but great opportunities for there. Now, you all have some communication outreach since you're kind of in part of that. Here you are representing Caritas as a communication site. You all have a podcast. Talk about that because podcasts have become very popular. I know this program is a podcast and a lot of people listen to it. Talk about that. So we're going to be launching that. Hopefully, it's, we've, we've done one episode. Mm -hmm. It's called A Seat at the Table. And so it's gonna it's uh, hosted with Rogue Media, mm -hmm. and so he's a local um, media consultant that hosts local podcasts here. You'll recognize someone if you go to his website, but he's great. He's letting us do it with him, and we're really excited about that. And so what we're gonna do? It's gonna be hosting uh, community conversations on food insecurity in McLennan County. Um, national conversations on food insecurity. What are resources for families, individuals? What is that looking like? Um, what's the latest data coming in on that? Um, and just we're excited to have some, hopefully some really great guests. Our second one coming on is actually going to be Buddy Edwards. Okay. And so we're excited to have Buddy back. He is just a wealth of knowledge as our retired executive director mm -hmm. who just retired this past spring. And we have in his place, we have Alicia Jala. Mm -hmm and Ann Owen as the co-executive directors. Mm -hmm. And so Ann, as the new executive director, will be interviewing Buddy. And so we're really excited to see that yep. happen and just that'd have be a these good two that'd wonderful be a hard people one to, there. That would be a hard one to make somebody be quiet. Oh, I know. Both of them are talkers. I know yes, Ann very they well, too. Yes, they are. So. <laughs> I love both of them. They're just such amazing people. And so, yeah, it's going to be called The Seat at the Table. And yep. it'll be, I believe it's going to be on Apple, Spotify, everything. And cool. we'll be pushing that out as we get some more episodes going. And so we have some great stuff planned for 2021. Part of your building got really beautified not too long ago with a beautiful mural. Talk about that because you all are into it. And Again, it shows the way some people have appreciated and shown their love for what you all do. Talk about your mural on the building. Well, we just started looking at our building. We have all these clients now driving past, so they're not coming inside. Um, everybody's on the outside right now, outside of the building, social distancing. And we have this wonderful local Waco artist. His name is Cade Kegaris, and he's incredibly talented. He's done some exhibits over at Creative Waco. He's done some other murals here as well, and he works with the um, Waco Art Apprenticeship Program. So he mentors a lot of younger artists. He went to Baylor for art. Just this incredibly talented, well-rounded mm -hmm. young man who's just absolutely amazing. And he painted this beautiful mural on our building, mm -hmm. and it is 15 foot by 60 foot. It took him almost a month to do it. He did it by himself. Um, he usually did it working through the night. Um, he was very dedicated and he worked very, very hard. And it's this beautiful display of these very vibrant um, fruits and vegetables. And it has our tagline on there, Beyond Hunger to Hope. There you are. That's amazing. Mary Beth Kalk is uh, with the Director of Marketing and Development, should I say, uh, of Caritas has been our guest this morning. Mary Beth, very important information that we've got to share with our community ways to volunteer where to share end of year giving if you're thinking about any of that type of thing uh, and a place to shop too for your christmas things or all kind of things coming up for the holidays food for families is over so that does not mean you cannot participate and share whatever wealth that you've been blessed to have not that you're wealthy any of us are not with but we don't we and you're year to year day to day monday through friday february through november are needy times too so anyway yes. thank you so much for bringing what you have today and thanks for being with us today. thank you so much for having me and we thank you for tuning in this week and we hope you'll tune in next week for more information about the city of waco on city talk this program is produced by the municipal information department of the city of waco and is provided as a public service by this station